on saying goodbye. I've always rather dreaded saying goodbye to things. I put this down to the fact that as a child, my mother left me every two and a half years to go back to India where uh, she was married to my father, a tea planter. And so each two and a half years or so from the age of six, um, when she first left me, though we didn't say goodbye, um, she just left me a present on the foot of my bed and next morning I asked where she was and I was told she would ring up and uh, she'd gone to London and then she was gone for two, over two years. And later, every two and a half years, three years, this happened, except each time I knew in advance, some months in advance, that she would be leaving. And the first few times were really painful, but I got used to it. And so I internalized the protection against saying goodbye to things and tried to move on and be positive. And I think in the end that hardening has helped me, uh, added to the fact that like many English, um, Western, highly mobile people, you are constantly saying goodbye. You are in a sit certain situation, in my case, for example, at schools, which um, boarding schools, which I came to love by the end of them. I really didn't want to say goodbye, but I had to move on to another school and then on to another university and then on to a, another part of my life. So each part of the country, each experience came to an end and one realized it, that there was no point in clinging on to these things. I'm not one of those people who goes back to school reunions or uh, haunts their old um, village or town or uh, school. I switch off to a considerable extent. I remember it and I write about it and I keep all the materials and photographs and so on. So it's all there, but I don't activate them except in memory. And that's certainly helping me at the moment because I've got a, facing another saying goodbye. And that is the fact that tomorrow a friend is coming from St Andrews University to take off the first set of my materials on my life, my archives, my papers, some of my books, um, films, other materials. So I've selected a subset of one part of my life, which is my work in over the years with Sarah in Japan, and accumulated the 20 or 30 boxes of materials and films and other things to do with Japan. And when Sarah asks me what I feel about it, I feel, I say, ambivalent, obviously. On the one hand, I'm relieved that I can move on, that it's no longer hanging around me and that the vast amount of materials I have are going to find a good home and hopefully be used by people in the future. And so there is a sense of relief and release on this saying goodbye, coupled with a recognition that that part of my life, at least the writing about it in a detailed way, is over. I can continue to mull over the curiosity of Japan and spend time talking to my Japanese friends and maybe write something new on Japan. But the intensive phase of that part of my life is over, as it will be as I ship off new segments. So what I am doing in saying goodbye is carefully orchestrating it, taking it bit by bit, making detailed summaries and descriptions of what I'm getting rid of. But once I've made the decision that it has to go, it has to go. And likewise, it coincides with another saying goodbye, which is that I have been in a room in my college, King's College in Cambridge, a beautiful room, both in the inner and outer room, for 41 years. And I recently was asked to move to another set of rooms to share with four or five other people 
In fact, it turns out to be, in its way, just as good, if not better, but it is totally different. And I'm saying goodbye to the pictures and to the objects and to the books on the shelves as they are arranged there over the years. And again, uh, I feel ambivalent. I would, if I was asked, I'd say I'd like to stay, but uh, now it's been decided. I didn't recriminate, I didn't argue about it. I just said, okay, fine. And it's like a switching a, a light switch. You've got to take the decision quickly and fairly ruthlessly. Otherwise you get um, trapped into um, sentiment, nostalgia, um, and false delusions that we are attached too closely to things, people, and places. And this also uh, applies to people. For example, when my parents died, I was very, very close to my mother and close to my father and to other people I've loved. And in each case, I felt the stab as I heard that they had died. But um, as with my grandmother and else, other people, I tried to assess their lives, my relationship, rejoiced in how good it had been and remembered them and wrote about them and dealt with them in the way I, I do as an academic. But I didn't cling on and I think about them and I have trees in my garden planted in their memory. So I remember them, but emotionally I let them go. And this um, is something which I've found helpful. It's obviously now ties in with a semi-Buddhist streak in me that we don't become attached to this world too deeply, to material things, to people, to relationships. While they exist, we benefit from them. And then when the time comes, we say goodbye. And so often when I meet people and um, we've had a wonderful time together and we're waiting uh, on the station to wave to each other, I often say to them, don't wait. I don't like saying goodbye. Just go off and we'll remember the good times we had together. So the art of saying goodbye is something we learn and I've learned in my own partly painful way.